What's up everybody and welcome back to part two of color grading. So this was a video that I wanted to get out uh, a bit sooner than this, but I've been putting most of my focus into creating my Lightroom course, which is currently clocking in at around five hours of footage. And it's really in depth for if you've seen some of my other videos, I like to go in depth about the tools and the theory behind them, what you can actually do. But this course is also gonna go into developing your editing mindset so you don't go into every image blind, unsure of what you're gonna do. But I really wanted to get this part two out and complete what we're doing. I've also been in the field shooting as well. So yeah, busy month. But let's dive straight into where we were with color grading part two. So I've got a couple of images for us to go over and edit today. I've already done all the prep work, so we're purely just gonna be doing the color grading side of that. But there were a few questions um, from the last video about how we do uh, camera calibration and the HSL sliders alongside the color grading. So hopefully by including a bit of that today, it's gonna to make some more sense. So with my color grading, I do like to go just from sort of shadows across, and I've got a couple of images here. I've got this washed out green like forest uh, kind of looks like a horror movie and I want to make this a little bit more cinematic and there are a few ways that I like to apply color grading and it's very dependent on the scene that I'm going for so if I had a, a forest scene that was something like this what I would probably do instead is bring into the shadows some more blues and then perhaps in the highlights what I've done there is just play around bringing in some more yellows and some oranges and I'd probably end up, yeah, shifting the, the balance of this, not from blues, but more towards that golden color. So usually if I've got a really bright forest scene where there's just too many greens going on and I wanted to bring in some other colors and I couldn't quite get it with the calibration or the HSL sliders, I'll use the color grade. So as I toggle from this, you see this really nice green scene and then it just brings into all the highlights, these orange tones, almost looks like you've got this light source of a sunset or a sunrise over here, just coming through the trees. For me, that just adds more depth to the color, makes the image more interesting, a little bit less flat. But the one we wanna edit then is this one here, and I'm gonna go for more of a cinematic look with this. So for a disclosure, let's have a look up top first. I've done basic edits, introduced some contrast as well with a tone curve but I couldn't quite get the blues that I wanted because if I go down into my HSL sliders here and I bring that blue right the way up on saturation, you'll see there's not much difference. There's just this little tone going on off to the side here though. But I'm gonna bring that right the way back down. Everything else is quite muted as well. So usually if I'm gonna be doing color grading and I'm introducing a color that's the same, I'll tend to pull it down in the HSL sliders, otherwise it becomes a bit too overwhelming. So let's bring us into the color grading and I'm just gonna reset all of these panels here. And we've got our muted look. So we've already established we can't get the blues. I could go into the tone curve and introduce some blues with the channels there, but I'm quite happy with the contrast that I've got in this image. So this is where I would just go for that color grading on the very end. And I still want you to imagine this as just taking your final photo and almost putting like a filter, like a film over the photo that just brings that extra bit of color into it. So with the shadows then, what I tend to do, I always work on the shadows first, don't know why, but I'll bring this in and I'll just cycle around what I want. And the aim with this picture, because I'm going for something that is um, very cinematic, very kind of muted feeling, I'm not gonna look at using split toning, which we'll come up to next. Instead, I'm just gonna introduce colors that are around the same level. So I'm gonna to look to introduce different cold colors here from the blues to the greens. And this is one way that I use color grading if I'm ever after anything, yeah, cinematic, um, that kind of spooky, dramatic look. So let's have a look, and I'll usually just spin this wheel until I find something that I like. And then for saturation, I tend to go to the extreme and work my way backwards from there. This is something that I actually learned from my sound engineering days because it's very easy for your ears to adjust to sounds the same way it's easy for your eyes to adjust if you're looking at an image and introducing more and more of this color. If I go the other way to something that already looks bad and come back from it, it's easier to find that place that sits a little bit more natural. So that looks all right, but I'm just gonna go down a bit further because I don't want this to be a massive difference there. If I come across here, we remember we talked about the luminous tool and to bring this, I get that faded look, but I'm losing a bit of that contrast. Uh, instead, I really wanna push this over to the far side with the blacks and the darks, so I'm just gonna pull this down as well. There we go. And let's just toggle that on and off, first of all. 
So you can see now that I've introduced a little bit of a blue over the top. So whilst we're just here, let's come back up to our blue channel on the HSL sliders and have a look what happens if I pull this back to full. You'll notice there is no difference at all with what's going on around here. So even though I've introduced some more blue into the image, by increasing the blue sliders, is not actually affecting my blue and the color grading. Instead, this would affect anything that's blue in the image, which will come in handy in our next photo. So I'm gonna bring this back down, and my blue saturation is purely controlled from down here in the color grading instead. So let's go over to the highlights next. I'm gonna come back to the midtones, and I'm gonna do the same sort of thing. I'm just gonna introduce some saturation, uh, and then I'm just gonna go around this. So that's a little bit too aquary. It's got too much of a purple tinge in the sky, so I want to sit like roughly around, yeah, the same place. I quite like that. Maybe a little bit too too much aqua there. So I'm going to back off that saturation because I just want a bit of a tint in that sky. I want most of my blues to be more in the shadows than actually in the highlights because you see that just makes the end of the road just look really unnatural. So I'm going to pull that back. Yeah, it looks quite nice there. And same with the luminance again. The sky is quite bright, so if I bring this up, I, I end up brightening my sky quite a lot. I do want a little bit more of the sky to be muted. I want a bit more of that sort of matte finish over it. So I'm going to pull this luminance down just so I get more of that blue in the sky. And I almost take away those whites a bit more. If you're not sure on any of these tools, please, like I say, go back and rewatch the first video again. Uh, just to understand the theory behind them. So let's toggle on off. Looking good so far. Really like this. I'm just going to introduce a little bit of mid tones here, and I really feel like maybe not have some more blues. I feel like maybe just bringing a bit more green into this side. So I know this looks really strange, but I just want to bring a slight more green back into these mid-tones because that was the dominant colour that I had here. Uh, again, that saturation is far too much. And let's bring down the luminance of that as well. There we go. So it's, it's just to hit these greens a little bit more, and I quite like what that's doing. If I just want to see what the mid-tones are doing, I'm going to toggle the eye on and off so you can see it's just I like it it's just added that little bit extra punch to the image kind of gives it that green washout in the blues but I like what it's doing down here just feel to me it feels like it pulls the image together a little bit more you might not like it but you know, this is very much personal taste of it whilst we're on the image then let's have a look at how we might get the different styles using the calibration so I'm happy with what I've got now on the color grading Let's go onto the blue channel with the calibration and let's just toggle that from one side to the other and have a look at what's happening to our image now. So we suddenly have a drastic difference going on here and that's because you've got to remember the calibration affects all of the pixels in the image. It's not just targeting the blues in particular when I'm doing this, it's targeting the blues within each of those pixels. Come across the other side and I get this very vibrant green which looks terribly un and unnatural. But what I do like about this is I could take this image as I want, or if I shift the calibration, again, I'm not really affecting what's happening with the color grading, but I am very heavily affecting the colors underneath. So maybe if I wanted to take away some of those greens, almost desaturates them down, gives it even more of a dramatic look, pushes it more towards those oranges there. Now, I quite like that, what that's doing. But again, I could take it as it is with the greens like this, but to me, that looks really nice like that. But you can see there how the calibration and the HLS sliders are working with the color grading. So my blue color grading is still there over the top. If I do one more toggle on and off of that, you can see that the calibration has just worked with what's in the image. This color grading is still my final layer over the top that is unaffected. Okay, so onto the other image then, and I've got this portrait image here, and I'm just gonna to toggle on off the color grading so you can see what's happening. And what I've tried to go for with this is almost a bit more of like a, a vintage vibe to it. So it's got this bit more of a green wash to it, but it's got some uh, warmer colors in there as well. 
And this is an example of how I would use split tone in. Now split tone in is what this tool used to be called. And when you split tone in, what you're essentially doing is taking one color from one side of the color wheel and one from the other. So you might have cold color like blue and something more yellow over here. The usual one you might see a lot, the Instagram favorite was the teal and orange ones. So you've got teal over here and orange over here. But there's a cool little tool in the color grade and that can help you very quickly decide if one of these is right for your image. And same again, let's have a look higher up in the image. So I've actually done no basic edits really here. All I've done is a quick little color fix to this. Um, not really affecting any hues because I want to really show you the power of doing this. Um, but I know that I'm going to be probably adding in something in the blues, probably going to be adding something in, in the warm in the warm colors. Um, what I'm essentially doing is just saturating some of the color out of the image because I'm going to be adding more on top of this. So I'm desaturating these colors, but once I add these other colors back in, I can go in and tweak. Now, let's have a look down at the color grading. So, and instead, so we want to go for a split tone vibe with this, which means I'm going to put some blues down in the shadows. I'm going to leave the mid tones alone and I'm going to put some warmer colors up in the highlights. Now, instead of me running around the wheel trying to find the right palette, I'm actually going to click this button here and it brings up sort of a list of custom colors already. And you can see in here, I've actually got blues and yellows. So I'm just going to click the blue one to start with here. And I'm going to go over into my highlights and I'm going to click the yellow one. So that's added to two different colors with quite a lot of saturation as well. But that's good because, like I said, go to the extremes and pull back from there. Your first task is to find the right hue to actually put into the image. So let's go back over to the shadows, have a look where it's picked for us. It's so right the way down in the blues here. Um, let's go with it, I do like it, but to me that is possibly a bit too much saturated, maybe not. I do like what it's doing. Actually, you know what, I'm gonna saturate it even more and leave it there. But like the other image, I want this to just really affect over into the blacks a bit more so I'm just going to pull that down and I do like to reference back to uh, other images so generally I'll have this open next to me I'll make a copy like that and then I'll come across just so I have a reminder of what I've edited so far and then I can see the difference over the top of this yeah like what's going on there let's go back over to the highlights and see what it's chosen for us um, probably a little bit too much towards the green, so I'm just going to pull this back slightly there, make it a bit warmer. So again, it throws you where you need to be, but you got to make the tweets. You've got to use your eyes for this. Um, that is too much though for me there. So let's pull that back down. Yeah, I like that. So I want the shadow color to dominate a bit more. I just wanted that warmer side in here, but I'm trying to achieve that almost like vintage style look to it. You can see these greens are quite green now. And if I didn't desaturate them out of the original image, so if I come back into here and I bring my yellows and things back up, you can see they've suddenly become really bright. So to prepare my photo for it, I have just brought these down. Okay, like what's going on there. Let's just, um, let's see which way to pull that. Okay, that brightens her face too much and the background too much, so we will pull the lumens over to this side a bit more. There we go. So I just don't want her face to be shown this color too much and over there. It's also actually helped me control a little bit more of the harsh lighting that is on her face here and just get rid of some of that. So we'll put that around 50. Blend in for this then. I do want a bit more of a smoother blend between the two. Probably to about there. And then balance. I think I want to just get those warmer colours to take over a little bit more. Because I didn't put as much in the saturation with them. But yeah, I, I like what that warm's colour doing. This is too washed out, like this is too green. Just gonna bring that little bit of balance in. Yeah, I like what that's doing. Okay, so if we toggle that on and off there then, you can see a big, big difference between the before and after. And we've achieved this sort of vintage filter look to it. 
Then I'd probably go over the top with loads of masking, some vignettes, and just really focusing on the subject, but we're not gonna do that today. What I will do is go back into my HSL sliders, and now that I've actually added the color grading on, I just wanna bring out some more colors that are going on here. So the reds are compositionally looking really nice in this. It's gonna make the subject pop. There's some reds in the background. But putting that color grading on is kind of, they've been lost a little bit. So I'm just going to boost the saturation of that to bring them back in. Really make them pop out a lot more. So you see that me doing this is not going to affect the color grading I've just popped in. But if I don't boost them up, I've lost that depth. Even though I've brought the color grading in, I've lost the depth a bit. And there we go, just to really make the subject pop from this color grade. So now the color grading is still affecting her skin but it's also affecting the background mostly and your eyes are drawn back into the subject. So, so whenever you've done the color grading, it's not the final step. If you think it's ruined certain things in your photo, remember to jump back a few steps. Go back into all your different panels and tweak. Just don't fall down the rabbit hole of constantly shifting sliders and forgetting where the changes you made actually came from. So I hope that's helped you today and give you a couple of examples following on from the theory video. Again, if you've not watched that, please do go and watch it. Please also like, subscribe, comment, anything to help the channel. I've put links down to my website below where I do have some preset packs up, but more importantly, where you can sign up for the course, which will be coming soon. I have a lot of editing to do, though, to get through five hours of footage, and I'm not done filming. But hopefully all going to be really important for you and lots and lots of tips and tricks there to take anybody really from a beginner of this to a pro but hopefully also to give some of you intermediate photographers and editors out there just something new to play around with. When you're trying to film and you've got this one who just won't leave you alone.